I'd like to show you how to resize an image here inside of InDesign. So you can see we've already placed our image inside of our document and I will be using our default tool, which is the black arrow tool, the selection tool. Okay, so I've selected my image and if I hold down the command key on a Mac or the control key on Windows, I am free to grab a corner and start to scale this thing up or down. Now notice, I can also potentially distort this thing. Now, if that's what you want, that's cool. But in most cases, you are going to want to honor the aspect ratio of the image. In other words, not distort this thing. So if you simultaneously hold down the shift key, you can scale this thing up or down without distorting it. So that's command and shift or control and shift. And when you're happy with the size, just release your mouse. Nice and easy. Uh, a nice little trick to know as well, guys, is if you want to do that scaling around the center point of your image, throw in the Alt or the Option key. So that's Command Option Shift or Control Alt Shift. And I'll show you that just now. So holding those three keys down, if I grab a corner, you can see I'm now resizing about the center. Very nice. So uh, guys, for most of you, that's probably enough. But let's step this up a notch. And um, I want to show you how to manipulate a second mysterious invisible thing just now. Okay, that was a little silly, I know. But I'm trying to make the point here. You think you're looking at one thing. The truth is there's actually two things going on just in here. Of course, we can see the image, but there is also a frame surrounding that image. So there's actually two elements here. And we have been simultaneously changing those by holding down the command or the control key. So I want you to see, guys, if I have, again, our default tool, the selection tool, I've clicked on this. If I just go and grab a corner, I'm not holding any modifier keys down. All I'm doing right now is adjusting the frame that contains the image. So you can see I've managed to crop off a whole bunch of the uh, top of the image just here. And I've also opened up this space just here where the image doesn't actually swell to fill the right side of the frame. So again, if you're just using your selection tool, if you go and grab a corner, you are adjusting the frame and not the image within the frame. Okay. So um, in this little scenario just here, I'm thinking I would like this image to occupy the bottom two thirds of this document. So I'm gonna scoot the bottom left corner of the image into the bottom left corner of the document, and then grab the upper right corner of the frame and maybe pop it about there. Very nice. Okay, so of course the next step here is we want to resize the image within the frame. So we want to get inside the frame to get access to the image. And there's a few different ways we can do that and I'll show you a few of them just now. Again, still using the black arrow tool, the default tool. If you double click, you have now gotten inside the frame and you are now manipulating the image itself. So if I go and grab a corner, now I'm not holding any modifier keys down guys, So I am free to resize this image. You can see I'm distorting it as well. So of course, uh, same rules apply as before. If you hold down the shift key, you will not distort that. So notice the frame is not moving, but I am now happily resizing the image within the frame. And I can push that all the way up. I can even go beyond the frame. And let's say I'm very happy with that. Guys, you don't just have to scale. You can also uh, move this as well. So with that image still selected, I am free to move it around as well. So maybe I like, for example, the top section better than the bottom. So I can move that into place like so. And I'll just click away. So having clicked away, guys, if I click back on this, You'll see by default, it's just now going after the frame. So you can see I could go and grab a corner like so. I'll just undo that. Reminding you, if I'm happy with the frame and I want to go after the picture, just double click to get inside. And now I'm actually going after the image itself and the frame is remaining where it is. Okay, I'll just click away just there. Uh, guys, there is a white arrow tool. That is the direct selection tool. If you select that tool, and if you just click once within here, you have basically bypassed the frame altogether and you have gone straight for the image. So you can see if I come up here and hold my shift key down, I am immediately changing the image and I've managed to bypass the frame altogether. So that can be nice if you don't want to potentially accidentally mess with your frame, just go straight for that um, direct selection tool just up there. But um, I'll come back to the uh, selection tool just here and again, click away because there is another major thing that I want to point out for you in terms of an ability to grab the image within the frame. 
and that's this thing just down here. So we've got this dot in the middle. That is called the content grabber, okay? So again, we're back using the black arrow tool, the selection tool. So every time I have my mouse over this graphic, this little thing appears just here. So remember guys, by default, if you're using the black arrow tool, you can resize the frame. You can also easily move the frame around and the image just comes along for the ride, right? But if you go and grab the content grabber, what you are doing is you are bypassing the frame and going straight to the image itself. So just to show you that again, guys, I've got my selection tool just here. If I was to grab basically any part of the image and move it, I'm moving simultaneously the image and the frame. I'll undo that. But if you come down and grab the content grabber, you are now just moving the image, but not the frame. So I'll just undo that. Now the content grabber can be extremely powerful, guys. It gives you very quick access to your images within your frames. However, it can be a little bit problematic. I've had this trip me up a couple of times as well. If you're moving very quickly, especially maybe if your document is zoomed out, you might be thinking you're just quickly grabbing a frame and moving it over. But if you happen to grab the content grabber and make a move, you're moving not the frame, but the image within the frame. So again, I'll undo that. So uh, content grabber is generally pretty cool, guys, but it does drive some people bananas. If you hate it and want to turn it off, up under the view menu, if you come down to extras, there is hide content grabber. So if you activate that, you are no longer seeing the content grabber. And of course, having turned it off, if you want to turn it back on, go up to view, extras, and then show content grabber. Okay, so that's it there, guys. A bit of a whirlwind tour of resizing images here inside of InDesign. I hope that helps. Catch you later.